안녕하십니까 니콜라스입니다 and on this video we are going to take a look at six new features that are coming to JavaScript this year. These new features are part of the ECMA 2023 specification, which is the document that specifies how JavaScript should work and what features it has. I like this year's updates a lot because they help us write code that is more predictable, has less bugs and is easier to maintain. That is because array methods in JavaScript can sometimes be confusing. For example, take a look at this code. X contains one 1, 2, and 3. Then we have y, whose value is equal to x, but reversed. And finally, we are doing y.push, adding 0 to y. The final value of y is easy to know. It will be 3, 2, 1, 0, which is the reverse of x plus the 0 we pushed at the end. Now the question is, what is the final value of x? Choose option A or option B. The correct option is B. If we read the code again, you could think that x remains as 1, 2, and 3, because it looks like we are only working with y since we assigned x that reverse to y, and then pushed 0 to y and not x. But because the reverse method does not create a new array, and it actually modifies the original array that is called on, which in this case is x, this means that x is reversed along with y. Then when we push 0 onto y, it's like we are also pushing 0 onto x, because they are both references to the same array. Even though by reading the code it does not seem like it, the code has a bug that will be hard to catch if we are not aware that the reverse method is mutating our program's state. Because of these types of bugs, there are many programming languages like Haskell, Clojure, Scala, Erlang and Rust, among many others, that completely forbid or discourage mutations. Those languages don't allow you or help you avoid mutating a variable. Instead, they make you create a modified copy of the original one. Mutations can lead to a variety of bugs that are often hard to spot and debug. Even React has this concept. If you are a React developer, you know that we should never mutate the state. We should always create a new one. To make this even worse, JavaScript is not really consistent on which methods mutate and which methods don't. For example, the sort method used to order an array changes the array in place. It mutates it, but the filter method used to remove unwanted items from an array does not mutate it. It returns a copy. Because mutability is okay in JavaScript, you as a developer have to remember which methods mutate and which methods don't. And you also have to do the copying of the arrays manually to avoid mutating the state. So to fix the problem with our code, we have to first copy x into y, making a whole new array, and then we can proceed to mutate. Or we can use the new to reversed method that does not mutate the array. It returns a modified copy of it. So now our code can look like this and it will be bug free. Apart from to reversed, we also have to sorted and to spliced. To sorted will sort an array. But unlike sort, it will not mutate it. It will instead return a modified copy. To spliced is a bit different from the original mutation loving splice. Let's do a recap real quick. Using splice, you can delete items in an array starting from a specific index. So for example, here we have an array with four letters and then we call splice. The first argument of splice tells it on which index to start removing items. In our case, we say index number one, which means the second item. The second argument is how many items to delete. In our case, we say we want to remove two items. So with this code, the B and C letters will be removed. Splice will mutate the array in place and it will return another array with the deleted items. To spliced does not do this. It does not mutate the array and it does not return an array of the deleted items. It returns the modified copy of the original array. Sometimes you want to know which items were deleted. So for this reason, you might want to keep using splice rather than to spliced. If you don't need the deleted items, then moving to to spliced will keep your code immutable and side effect free. Another super useful new method is width. Width allows you to modify the item inside of an array without mutating the original. So for example, if we had this array and we wanted to change the x for ad without the new width method, we would do something like this. But that would mutate the original array. Instead, we can use the width method. We will pass the index of the item we want to change and the new value. And we will get a copy of the original array with the modified value. 
And last but not least, we have the find last and find last index methods. They are a mirror to the already existing find and find index methods. Find will give you the first item on an array that matches your search. And find index will give you the index where that item is. Find last and find last index work and look the same way, except that they search for the last item and not the first one. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope that these new methods can help you make your code better and reduce unexpected bugs in your code. I always get the questions of where and how do these JavaScript updates get decided? Who comes up with them and who decides to implement them? If that's something you're curious about, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video about how JavaScript is made. Also, let me know in the comments what your favorite method is on this list. And if you have had any bugs due to mutations before. And please remember that you can take our free JavaScript for beginners course, where we spend eight hours learning JavaScript together and where we build things like clocks, to-do lists, weather, geolocation, and more. To join, just click the link below, and roll for free, and I will see you there. Onundo, kamsahago, sanahago, dao me boyo, see you on the next one, bye-bye.